Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the SimLab P1 Cockpit Upgrade Kit. <laughs> An easy way to bring your existing P1 Cockpit up to date on how the new P1X version of the cockpit is configured. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. So now let's take a closer look at the P1 upgrade kit, which will make your P1 a P1X. Not a lot to it. We got feet and we have a pedal tray. Now, you can actually get the feet separate from the pedal tray if you want. The feet kit, or foot kit, however you want to call it, is 41.2 or 3 or something euro. The whole kit itself is 156.2, I believe, euro, give or take a euro. And what's cool is you can actually order this. I got the black anodized profiles. It didn't cost any more over the gray anodized profile. So that's kind of nice. And let's go ahead and look at the feet first. And this is one of the assembled units. And what we get with this kit is you get these huge M16 threaded rods here with a ball on the bottom and also a nut integrated into the whole piece. Of course, we get some nuts, M16 nuts that will fit that. We get washers. I only get four washers though, not eight, which I thought maybe we should have had one on both sides, but I'll look at that in a second. And we get some M8 bolts that are 25 millimeters long. These are M8 socket cap heads with six millimeters pieces on the top for your six millimeter wrench. And we get these nice, as usual from SimLab, these roll-in T-nuts with the locating grooves on top of them. Yes, very nice indeed, M8s. So, here's how this thing goes together. The rod's going to go in this big hole. First of all, let's look at one that doesn't have any in it. You've got this large hole there is for the M16 rod. You have two smaller holes for the M8 bolts that we just looked at. And this is the part, obviously, is going to have the T-nuts on it and we slide the whole thing in. Now, this is a very massive piece of aluminum here. This is really, really big. So it's 15.27 mils in thickness. So massive, you know, this is, I don't know what you could put on your P1 rig that would break this, this system once you had it on there. But yeah, this is something that, yeah, I like thick stuff like this though and heavy duty because that just means that it's never gonna fail on you. You're never gonna have a problem with it. And yeah, so let's look at an assembled one. For, it's very simple what we're doing here, obviously. We're just pushing, putting the threaded rod piece through the big hole. We're going to put our T-nuts on this hole and, of course, this hole here. And once you have these T-nuts in, you can just pull the caps off your profile. If you have them on there, there's beauty caps. And you can just slide the whole thing in. As long as, obviously, it's short enough to clear where, however high off the ground it is currently. And we have a locking nut system here that we see a lot of on different things and you can see i put the washer on the bottom part where the foot is going to be and we'll look at the foot in a second or the pad for the foot it's going to sit like that and i put the washer on there because with all the weight of your platform or your cockpit on top of this you're going to want this bolt or rather this nut here to be contacting that washer if you have to raise or lower it because all that weight on there you know this this nut would just grind into that aluminum over there so that's why we have a washer on the bottom. Actually, I would have liked to seen a, a washer on the top too, just for the heck of it, even though the top nut is not gonna be t grinding into anything, you're just gonna be using that as a, the locking nut as you rotate these in different ways and lock them together so it doesn't move. But yeah, they just, like I said, I would like to see another washer in there because we have a washer there, maybe think, boy, it'd be nice to have one there. And yeah, that's pretty it pretty much it as far as the assembly you know it's not a lot to it very effective very heavy duty we'll talk about the feet <laughs> i'm gonna throw the feet around this rubber piece kicked back at me and it has a plastic piece here and that's the top part and it, it interfaces with the ball you see a little socket in there a little socket and it interfaces with the ball here now when you set it down like that the ball really doesn't go in there but i got a feeling once we put some weight on it, it's going to pop in there. And the reason we have a ball joint is because if you have some kind of unlevel surface that you have to set your P1 rig onto, or P1X, this will compensate for that. Let's take my little thing here. There we go. Let's say I had some a floor that had boards in it or uneven, whatever. 
then I could actually set this foot on there and it would still level out. Very cool if you ever need that. And yeah, it's just, you know, thinking out of the box a little bit for what the feet should be able to do. Almost like if you had a motion actuator on it or something so it could move around freely. Now we have this rubber piece here that's a pad that goes inside. Not sure why they don't pre-assemble these, but whatever. Obviously we have a piece there that's cut into it that's going to fit this piece here that says it says 80 on it. And it's not 80 millimeters because I measured it, so yeah, I'm not sure what 80 means. But yeah, it's a simple thing. You just place it on top of the plastic there and kind of work it in. It is rubber, so it, it, it goes on pretty easily. Now we'll have a nice sticky rubber grip on the bottom when this is sitting in there. Yeah, so I don't see anything else to show you. It's a pretty simple affair here, really, for the feet. What else can we do before we move on to the pedal tray? They actually sent me this little guy, and this is what they call a headphone mount. And it's got a couple of holes on one side, that, and they give you some socket head cap M6 bolts that obviously will go in there from the inside like that. And they give us some 40 series profile M6 threaded T-nuts with the roll-in spring ball there. And of course, that'll fit on the other side. Whoop. <laughs> that'll fit on the other side. And yeah. Pretty self-explanatory. Put it in the grooves or the channels, whether it's horizontal or vertical, it doesn't matter. And then tighten it down and you've got a nice little shelf there to hang your headphones or cabling or whatever else you want to put on there. So yeah, they're available in the accessory department. I did not, it doesn't come with this kit. They, it was just in the box when I opened it. So yeah, I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> right. Now let's get over to the pedal tray. Now this is also massive as far as the pieces go. You got these two side pieces. And this is actually pointed to the front. Well, it really doesn't matter. I mean, you can flip it around and have it pointed to the back if you want it. It depends on what you want to do. But in all the pictures on their website, this is pointing towards the front of the rig or out from the front of the rig. And this is towards the rear. Right, so obviously these are massive units, just like these feet. Let's get this foot out of the way. And they're about, I believe, 15 mil also. Maybe a little more. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. Well, I keep moving around. Well, there we go. 15.14. So, yeah, again, very substantial piece of metal in your hand. Just almost like it's overbuilt or something. It's just huge. And we get two of them because they're going to go inside of the P1's front chassis and also on the P1X. So these are 15 millimeter. Two of them gives us 30 millimeter. That means because the P1's are 500 millimeter inside, and of course that's because the cross pieces when we build the P1 and the P1X is a 500 millimeter piece. So that's the, the length. So these are actually 400. Let's see, we got 30 here. So these are 470 as far as the length of them. And they're going to fit inside of these pieces like so. Well, you know, there's different ways you can do this. There's no real set way. And that's what I, I was wondering. I said, you know, how am I going to do this? It's, it's pretty flexible. We can mount this into the slot part here. Now, this is actually a 4080. And I want to show you this. They come tapped and threaded there. See the threads in there? So we're going to be attaching this. And this is the way they have it in the slot. So we can actually take this and slide it back and forth and make adjustments. Now the huge piece over here, this 4160. Now this is what our P1, P1 and P1X frames are made of on the base. Very large, substantial piece here. This is tapped on the ends. So we got a tap over here. See the threads there and threads here, but no threads in the middle too. They are actually kind of fixed on what we're going to do with these because the hole spacings here on this piece here fit those two end pieces. So that's where this is going. Nowhere else. That's where we're going to mount it. Now, we can actually do something different with this piece because the spacing on it is the same spacing on the holes here. If I turn it this way, let me look down here and make sure I'm not making a false statement to you guys, but I've already did this once, so yeah. So we can actually mount this lower if we wanted to into the chassis for whatever reason. Right, and the, but the other piece is still going to be up here, forming the backbone of the tray itself. So, 
the rule for mounting this is there's kind of like no rules. <laughs> so you can flip it around. You can, you know, you can actually put this thing upside down if you wanted to. I mean, it's, like I said, as long as these slots here, and these are the main mounting slots right here. And if we flipped it upside down, then we could still mount this. You can see we've got two more holes on the other side. We could still mount this there if we wanted to. <laughs> so again, there's no one rule on how to mount this, except for you're going to have this big piece this 160 has got to be mounted in here somewhere, right? And if we flip this around, then it would be mounted, you know, we'd, it'd be sticking down lower like that for whatever reasons that you wanted to do it that way. But here we have how we're going to adjust the height is these slots, right? So we're going to be raising and lowering in, in, those, in those slots. Now, they give us a bag of hardware, as you might imagine. And there's a lot of pieces of hardware in here. So I'm assuming, and we're going to put this together, and we're going to see how it all works once we, it'll, it'll look, look a little different, I'm sure, once I get it all put together, and we can look at the options, it will be a little bit more clearer on what we can do. But I would imagine there's at least two M8 bolts in here for two channels, and then we're, we're raising it up and down based on that. And of course, we have, in the base of a P1 or P1X, we've got four of those channels. See, just like this, one, two, three, four. So we can actually put this in here. Let's just go ahead and stand this up. Maybe it'll look a little better. Black on black is not a good contrast for video, but we're going to try. Okay. So, yeah, this cane can sit here like this, and then we can move it. Actually, we'll do it like this because, well, I guess it doesn't matter, does it? If these flathead pieces here, you don't want anything sticking into the profile, obviously. So we're going to have some flathead screws that can go in here if we're going to mount that 4080 piece in here somewhere, or we can put them up here so they don't interfere with anything. But here's what, I, what I'm looking at here. You can actually put this thing pretty high up in the air, up to the limits of these channels here. And that's about right there. So, yeah, that's pretty high, I guess. If you're using these two channels right here, you can have a bolt here, 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 and here. And which would actually work pretty good for me, I think, because of the way I have some D-box control boxes down inside of my chassis. But yeah, we're going to have to check that out and see if this interferes with it or not. But yeah, you can go down all the way down here because we can get two bolts in those channels. We can go in the middle ones if we want to go a little bit higher. And we can go up to this height. And then, of course, there is some wiggle room within that height in each one of the other heights, too. So... It's a pretty versatile unit, I think. And of course, I, again, I'm not sure how I'm going to have it together. Actually, I, I think I, I'm pretty sure how I'm going to have it together. But I'm going to, yeah, when we come back, we're going to go ahead and assemble it and see how it goes together. Just being the stock one that you see in the pictures where we have this 4080 piece up here. And then we'll have the huge <laughs> 160 piece in here and in between them. I'm also thinking about how to mount this. Do I want to put this whole thing together and then go over to the cockpit and try to slide everything down in the cockpit and then locate, you know, the bolts here, the T-nuts where the bolts need to go while I'm holding all this weight? Or do I just want to put these plates in first and, you know, just loosely mount them with these slots here where I generally want it to be and then come in with my profiles as long as it's obviously sticking up higher than my base profiles and just put these profiles in then. I think that would probably be the easiest way to do it because once you get this thing together with all of this, this heavy metal, just trying to lower the whole piece down in there and then get a, you know, your M8 bolt started, you know, you got four on each side. Yeah, that seems to be probably not the way I want to try it. <laughs> and I just know from experience assembling things, that's probably not the way I want to go. I want to go ahead and get these brackets set up and get them pretty close, but you know, leave them loose enough so that I can still wiggle them around a little bit, and then come in with the profiles, and yeah, from the other side, just put your bolts in and mount it that way. And then once it's all assembled that way, then we can move it around, do some other things with it at that time. But when we come back, we're gonna go ahead and have this going together. I think what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and, and take these plates over to my P1 rig and see where I'm gonna put them at and mount them, and we'll just talk about it as I do that. So now we have the loosely assembled foot assembly. And yeah, this is going to be very easy to put on because I don't have anything in the way here. 
this actuator you can see back here if it was up here and I wanted to put the foot back here somewhere then yeah I would have to do something a little different I can just take the end cap off because it's not in the way and I want to put it on the corner here and just slide it in now if, if there was something in the way easy enough remember these are spring ball t-nuts as they're known and they just twist into the channel so you could do that I could do that on the other side of this actuator and then just go ahead and run these M8 socket head bolts up inside of it through the plate of course I usually put a mirror a mechanics mirror or any kind of mirror will work underneath while I'm doing that it makes it a lot easier to see where these t-nuts are when you're trying to get it in it can be a bit frustrating otherwise but yeah we have the leg or the foot the leg of the foot maybe loosely assembled I'm actually I'm gonna actually bring it up a little bit more here yeah to make sure that it clears when I'm putting it in the channel and let's go ahead and do that I'm just going to start the t-nut and again I make sure I have enough room between this t-nut and the surface of our plate here so it will slide in the channel easily easy enough and then once it's in I'm done really depending on where I want to put this so it's totally up to you what you want to do then you would tighten up these M8 bolts and these are six millimeter hex on the heads and then we'll go ahead and slide this down by moving this nut up all right now you see the feet on here I want to address that real quick and show you guys a little b-roll here on how we get these feet attached to this rod and this little ball that's at the end of the rod first I took a, a, a rubber mallet and kind of tapped on it and that didn't get me anywhere so I went ahead and got a regular ball peen hammer put it on concrete as you can see here and then yeah a couple of hits with that ball peen hammer on concrete and it snapped into the cup as you can see here once that happens then we have the swivel action or swivel capability so that no matter what the surface is we're putting it on if it's unlevel or whatever then it will work very cool right so now we have the foot down here what I would do is take this nut and run it up and it's, this spins really easily with your fingers and kind of I kind of look down straight on it to make sure it because it is swivel so easily just to make sure it's straight up and down and then I'll turn it with my fingers until I can't do that anymore and if you want to obviously we're going to tighten down these M8 bolts under here if you want to you can actually tighten it down more but these are very large nuts on here remember this is an M16 thread these are actually 24 millimeter nuts but you can go ahead and take a 24 millimeter spanner or wrench as we like to call them around here and just kind of tighten it up a little bit and that will put more tension on the bottom right then of course you just lock it down with your top nut like this snug it up you really don't have to put too much on this unless you know it's not like you have a motion system pushing this thing around this is actually just sitting on the feet supporting this now of course you need to jack up your rig if it's if it's not already sitting on something uh, on one side at a time to get this done right so that's about it the feet are on looks pretty good very versatile I think you can actually switch this bracket around so that it's you know the angles going the other way you know it's really no set way to do this except get these bolts in the channel obviously and get the foot on it so what we'll do next is yeah we'll move on to the pedal tray for this P1 upgrade kit I've got the side brackets mounted to our 4160 profiles and I think this is going to work better than trying to like I said before when I was doing the closer look pre-assemble this whole unit and bring it in here and try to hold it up while I'm trying to get nuts these bolts into the nuts on the side of course that depends you know when you could do it either way but I thought it might be easier to do this easier to handle them piece by piece instead of the whole piece the whole section that was already assembled so we'll see how that works out now I have them loosely again assembled here I'm watching the back edges here I'm getting them even with the edges of the profile in fact this one needs to come back a little all right and I have the M8 bolts and T-nuts in the top two channels of this 160 profile because I'm going to be moving my seat up a little bit because of a different thing I'm doing over there and I just want to make sure this is high enough and this is right now it's sitting flat on the bolts on the first and second channel yeah and actually I can actually bring that up a bit as you can see see so that can go up a lot higher keep my cable out of the way there so now that we're even back here we should be even with our holes in the front here and as I said before I'll be using these flatheads 
and these are M8s also, of course, but just flathead bolts. They are five millimeter hex on the end of them here. So we're gonna go ahead and get our five mil wrench. And I'm gonna start with the front profile because it's the heaviest. So if I'm gonna have problems, I'll start, <laughs> I'll start having problems with the heavy piece. And first, uh, one thing I wanted to point out to you guys is when this, you get these profiles, it doesn't matter if you, you get them pre-cut or if you get them, or you cut them yourself. It's always a good idea to go on the edges because when the blade cuts through aluminum or anything, really wood, doesn't really matter, there's tear out on where it exits the material, in this case, aluminum. And that leaves a burr, a scratchy burr on the edge. And sometimes there's a burr even on the top, depending. So what I do is, I got some B-roll to show you here, is I'll take the, I took this actually 4160 and took my Gobert or Gobert, some people call them, uh, file and just file that down. This is number two Grobe file in case you guys are interested in that kind of thing. And just gently get these edges filed down and then, you, you know, just make sure that they're smooth. So when they go in, the whole point of that is when they go in between these two plates, then we don't get a lot of scratching on our powder coat on the plates. At least it minimizes, you know, it takes the possibility down to a, a lower level as we're putting it in because this is going to be tight, no doubt. So let's further ado, let's go ahead and put this baby in here. And I'm just going to kind of wiggle it in here and see what I've got going on. And it looks like, yeah, this is pretty good actually. Now the only thing is we've got holes we have to line up here. Unlike the slot that we have here, we've got two holes. And I want to make sure that obviously we get it to where it's going to line up. And I'm also trying not to move it around too much and keep from scratching it. Really, the only way to do this is to lean down and see where the hole is. So I'm going to be in the way for a second to get that started. And that started pretty good. Now, hopefully, this other hole, I won't even have to look down at that because I can just kind of raise it up and down and find out where it is. All right, so we've got these started. Of course, I'm not going to tighten them all the way down, but I am going to run them in far enough that I don't have any fear of stripping anything when I'm working on the other side, trying to get those bolts in. And I'm not going to let go of it either. I'm going to pick up my stuff and keep pressure, upward pressure on it. Then I'll go over here, switch hands, and do the same thing over here that we did on that side. Go over here and look. Try to find my hole, and there it is. At least that, anyway, at least it looked like that's where the hole was. All right. It's always the, the second ones that go in. There we go. The hardest. All right, so I got that one started, and now this should line up pretty easily to get the last one started. And that feels like it's going in. And you always want to get it finger tight before you start putting a wrench on it, because if you don't, and you put a wrench on it, and it becomes difficult to turn, and you keep, <laughs> you want to stop. You don't want to run this in and start stripping things out. Now remember, I'm still not going to tighten this all the way up, because obviously, we still got this guy to go in. And it's going to be the same kind of deal, except we're going to be putting it in the slot. So this is going to be an adjustable plate for us. Oh, I think I got a little scratch on there already. <laughs> oh, I hate it when I scratch stuff. All right, so this one's going to go in, should go in a little bit easier now that we got that front one in. And yeah, that looks pretty good there. I'm just kind of, I'm pushing outwards when I'm bringing this down with my thumbs here. I'm just kind of guiding it down and taking the back of my hands on both sides of these plates and pushing outward to try to get this thing to go in squarely. Plus, you want to make sure you're not doing angle like that because any little bit of angle will make it difficult to put it in. You got to get it perfectly square to the side of these plates. You can see how that drops in there when you do that. Very cool when it does that. You really have to work them in together. <laughs> yeah, and that's good. Tight is good. That's what you want. You don't want any play in this stuff. All right, so I'm going to lean over here again, see if I can locate my threaded hole and I found it grab the other one do the same thing sorry I'm blocking you guys out with my head here I'm doing this there we go here all right so those are in and it's so tight I don't even have to hold the other side up so that's great that's what I like to see let's get this guy started Actually, I think I need to come down a little bit more on this. There we go. I think that'll be better. 
it's definitely a little bit of shaking and moving it around to get your your screw started just finding that sweet spot and yeah of course this side's going to be harder than the other side was can't seem to let's try this back one sometimes if you don't get the front one or you got one hole doesn't go i'll go to the next hole and see if i can get it started which i can which once that's started then it allows me to kind of pull it to where it needs to be with that screw because this one's having a little bit of trouble starting and I'm always cautious when I'm having trouble starting a screw because I don't want it to strip out. And there we go. Now we're good. All right, so all I have to do now is make a decision of where I want this bar to be. And to be frank, I don't know yet. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know where I'm going to be setting this pedal set at. I got a feeling, though, if I'm running my, if I'm going to be running my, let's see how easy. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, easy. it really moves pretty easily not scratching it too bad and yeah so yeah I'm gonna leave this one loose and leave them everything loose actually until I get the pedals mounted on here then I'll know exactly where I need to scooch one or the other well this one's not moving obviously but where I need to put this one to get my pedals mounted where I need them to be but yeah that one together I think pretty easy because we've already got the brackets installed if I try to come in here with this thing tight already and then you know trying to grab it like this and hold it under the arm and get a bolt in here and all this mess I and mean, it's very heavy this is a 17 pound piece here that yeah i think doing it this way is easier at least it was for me of course you can do it any way you want to it's your rig so now that we've got this mounted yeah we got the we did the foot or the, the feet and now we have this mounted so i can put the rest of the rig back together get everything mounted back up and get my cable management back in because this I had to remove it to get these plates in here. And yeah, when we come back, we'll have the, the rig completely reconfigured and ready to drive and take a look at how the pedals mounted up. So now we have the Wave Italy pedals mounted and I decided to use those for this actual review. And you can see the plates are sticking up about almost four inches above the P1 rails there which puts it exactly where I needed as far as getting the ergonomic angle to my seat down there. So my bum is level with my heels when I'm actually sitting in the rig itself, which is very comfortable when driving. Again, I'm just not sure why more manufacturers aren't doing this to give us a elevation option. And, you know, they give us angles but they don't get, you know, we can adjust the angles of the pedals, but we don't have any elevations. But now we can with this P1 upgrade kit. And yeah, this is a very solid mount, as you guys might imagine. This is solid. It is rock. It's like, yeah, there's no flex at all in this. And there was no flex in the other one either. Now, one thing about this I'd like to point out is because we have four M8 bolts on either side of these plates, I no longer have the easy for and aft adjustment feature here. We used to have a couple of knobs on each side of our 160 profiles here, and the brackets were attached to the profiles crossing the gap here, and it was easy to loosen those up and slide them back and forth. If I had someone with longer legs or, you know, just needed to adjust it for whatever reasons, much easier to do. Now we have eight M8 bolts we have to loosen up, and when we do that, because of the weight of the pedals being on the tray, it will have a tendency to drop down. And yeah, we don't you just have to hold it up, bring it back and yeah, push it back up to where you are and tighten it up a little bit more difficult. However, because of the elevation I get and I no longer have to build a profile platform under my pedals, I'm happy with this. I think <laughs> it takes a lot of the effort out of having to cut profiles and get something custom built so that you can run your pedals at the right levels to your seat. And we'll go ahead and walk around the front here and the other side. Watch out for the seat. And there we go. Yeah, this is working out real well. Again, solid as a rock. I have no problem at all with this setup. So now that we have it all mounted, all we have to do now is get in the cockpit and do some driving. Now we're doing some testing of this pedal tray and I'm looking for flex or any kind of undesirable characteristic that might rear its ugly head here under some really hard braking at Sebring and iRacing in the Ferrari 488. 
and yeah there's there's no flex here i think you guys can see that if you're watching this video and follow along here it's very very solid and this pedal set is a very subtle solid pedal set also and it definitely will will reveal any weaknesses in the pedal tray that they're mounted to and because they're a solid pedal set if there is a less than adequate pedal tray underneath you don't get the same tactile feel back from these pedals when you're actually using them and yeah here it's it's very solid and yeah everything just feels really good easy to drive fast and hard because everything is predictable there's no you know, bending in the pedal tray or anything that would cause us to be guessing what's happening next time i hit the brake pedal or i try to accelerate hard out of the corner so again as you can see very solid pedal tray and it delivers all the nuances that this pedal set can give or any pedal set for that matter that you have mounted to it they've done a very good job with this not that the other p1 pedal tray had any problems with flex either it was also very stiff but now we have this a lift capability or an elevation capability here that we never had before which i really like now there is some something you lose there's always a compromise it seems like isn't it no matter what we do it's, there is some some loss of fore and aft mobility here as far as the ease of moving it back and forth the p1 pedal tray has the knobs two knobs on either side and we can just loosen those and slide the tray back and forth and that's good if you have a lot of different people coming in and testing your cockpit which I do sometimes, but you know what? Having a pedal tray that I can just raise up without having to build a, a platform of profile underneath it to get my pedals at the right level is also a big plus. So anyway, it's just one of those things that I tend to point out when I'm actually doing a test of any piece of hardware. So yeah, that's about it. I'm, I'm pleased as can be with this pedal tray, and I think anyone else who gets it will also be there too. So now we'll just get to the final thoughts next. Final thoughts on the SimLab P1 Upgrade Kit. When a new version of an existing product comes out, sometimes people can, well, feel a little bit left out in the cold. <laughs> Especially if the new version offers something that they would like to upgrade on their existing product. Now, there are some manufacturers who do not have a path forward for a person who bought the original product. And of course, the only way to get the parts that the customer wants on the new product is to buy that new product. Well, I'm happy to say that SimLab is not one of those companies. Now you can upgrade to the newer parts offered in the P1X cockpit by purchasing this upgrade kit. The kit only has two new bits of hardware, which really, if you think about it, is pretty much a testament to how right they got the original P1 cockpit. I received the kit because of the new pedal tray unit. The heavy duty feet that comes with the kit are really kind of nice. They add both a sturdier stance to the P1 and what I think is a nice aesthetic or look. The feet are capable of providing your cockpit with a level stance, even if your floor, well, isn't level. <laughs> now, on to the piece that I wanted for my P1, and of course, that's the pedal tray. It seems that most cockpit solutions out there today just don't have enough elevation available in their pedal trays. Now, I I'm not sure why manufacturers continue to ignore this issue. They don't have any problem engineering a tilt element to their pedal trays, but miss on the fact that we would like to be able to raise our pedal sets higher without having to build a pedestal or some kind of platform underneath it to get it done. Now, this is an ergonomic issue. The more level your pedals are with your seat, the more comfortable a sim racer will be. Thankfully, SimLab has addressed this issue with this new tray. For the first time since, man, since I can remember, I didn't have to raise the level of my pedals by building a profile platform under them. All I have to do is raise the pedal tray. Well, how brilliant is that? <laughs> Hopefully, other cockpit manufacturers will get a clue and follow suit. I really like this pedal tray. It's made from heavy-duty materials and weighing in at around 17 pounds, it provides a very solid platform for your pedals and has no perceivable flex. Just a treat to use, really. Now, not all is perfect here. As with most things in life, I had to lose something to get something. <laughs> and that is the ease in adjusting the fore and aft position of the original P1 tray. Now I have to loosen eight M8 bolts to make that adjustment. So, 
something to consider if you have other people using the same rig who require an adjustment to the pedal tray location. Also, you can get the upgraded foot kit by itself, but not the pedal tray on its own, something I would like to see SimLab change. Overall, I think you do get your money's worth with this kit if you're looking to upgrade your P1 with these new components. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.